In this Cricut tutorial for beginners, I am showing you how you can quickly and easily burn an image or a design into wood without a branding iron and without a wood burning kit, but primarily with the help of your Cricut cutting machine as well as a few other supplies. So let's get crafty. Hey, I'm Michael and this is Mr. Crafty Pants, your Cricut and crafting channel where I post Cricut tips, tricks, and tutorials every single week. So if you are new around here and you're also just trying to learn how to use your Cricut cutting machine or maybe even how to master your Cricut cutting machine, well, you may want to consider stamping that subscribe button and then ringing that bell for all of the notifications because you do not want to miss out on a single Cricut Minute. Now y'all, this is another Craftoween episode. I know y'all are excited. I'm excited. And if you have no idea what that means, it's basically just Halloween themed Cricut projects. But on top of that, during Craftoween, Y'all, I am giving away a Cricut Maker bundle. So not only just a Cricut Maker, but also a full pack of my favorite type of permanent adhesive vinyl, which is the StarCraft HD permanent adhesive vinyl. Literally every single color that they make, you'll get it. <laughs> On top of that, I'm giving you a 30 foot roll of my favorite medium tack transfer tape, as well as my favorite weeding tool, which is the pin pin. And also I'm throwing in there a squeegee tool as well. Now, if this is the first time you're hearing about it, you're probably wanting to know, well, how in the heck do I get registered? And good question. <laughs> this giveaway is exclusive to those who are members of my texting community. So if you don't know what that is, if you're not a member already of my texting community, no worries, I got you. It's super, super quick, super, super easy, and super, super free to join. All you have to do is just shoot me a text at 502-878-7189. As soon as you do that, you'll get an immediate auto response that's just basically asking you to click a link, put in some information, so that I then have your information in my phone. That way I just know who I'm talking to. <laughs> from there, all you have to do is just watch these craft -ween episodes from the very beginning, all the way up until the very end. Throughout the course of those videos, these little code words will be popping up throughout the video. All you have to do is just jot those down whenever you see them. Once the video is over, all those little code words are going to create one cohesive phrase, one Halloween themed cohesive phrase. From there, all you have to do is just text that into me. That's it. So now that that is all out of the way, let's jump into today's project. I'm so excited for this, y'all. I cannot even begin to tell you <laughs> how many times I have went around and around and around trying to make this perfect, or at least in my opinion, make it perfect. I know everybody's gonna have their own difference of opinion on it, but I think it's absolutely great. As far as burning your images, whether that be an actual image or a design or words, phrases, letters, whatever you wanna burn into wood, first things first, we're obviously gonna need some wood, right? And I'm using this wooden disc right here. I'm sure you've probably seen these all over YouTube, all over Facebook, probably just literally everywhere. I actually got this from Lowe's, I believe. I know Home Depot sells them as well. These are like six, seven, eight bucks, somewhere in that price range. It's 15 inches round and it's one inch thick. And I'm actually gonna turn this into a really cool serving tray, which is why I also bought these little handles right here. These definitely came from Lowe's and I'm actually gonna just screw them right onto this wooden disc and make a little serving tray out of them. For this particular project, I'm also gonna be creating a stencil. And for the stencil, instead of actually using a stencil film vinyl, which I did try, didn't work out the greatest, which is why I'm not using it for this particular project. I mean, stencil film vinyl is phenomenal for a lot of different projects. It just didn't work out too great for this one specifically. So I'm actually gonna be using this permanent adhesive vinyl right here. The stencil has zero bearing on what your final project is gonna look like in terms of like what the color of the stencil is. So really just grab a color that you don't really foresee yourself using very often. We are also gonna be using my favorite transfer tape, which is this medium tack transfer tape right here. Love this stuff. Like it's basically witchcraft, which I guess is perfect for craft of Wayne because I don't know how they made this, but it's literally perfection. Now it is important, very, very important that the wood that we're using is unsealed or raw. Is that 
how you describe that, like raw wood? No, unsealed wood, whatever you want to call that. However, I am going to go ahead and stain the wood. And I'm actually using this little Minwax wood finishing cloths, this right here. To be completely honest with you, I have no idea if they still make these or not. I actually grabbed these on clearance at Lowe's probably six, seven, eight months ago or so. And they're just really, really convenient, which is why I love them. You just throw on a pair of gloves, uh, grab a little cloth out of here, wipe it on the wood, then wipe over it to try and get the excess off of it. Wait an hour and it's done. It also cleans up with soap and water, which is great as well. Right about now, you might be wondering, if we're not using a branding iron and we're not using a wood burning kit, how in the heck are we burning our design into wood? Especially with our Cricut cutting machine. <laughs> and y'all, that's where this magic right here comes in. This is ammonium chloride. Now I cannot take any credit for this whatsoever. I actually got this idea from another YouTuber named Laura Kampf. I believe she's, um, I believe she lives in Germany, but she was actually talking about this method on her YouTube channel. And I actually just started working with it and tried out all kinds of different methods to get it to where I want it to be today. And what actually happens, which is just so freaking cool, is once you mix this ammonium chloride solution with water and apply it to a wooden surface and then apply some heat, like in the form of this heat gun right here, there is this little chemical reaction that actually burns into the wood. It's so freaking cool. Like, I love it. Now, with all that being said, y'all know I'm all about safety first. So even though this method is pretty safe, to be honest, I still recommend taking all safety precautions, wearing some gloves, wearing a mask, wearing some safety goggles. I mean, it comes down to this. I'd much rather you all be safe than sorry. All right, so right about now, you might kind of have the idea, the overall idea, right? So we're gonna create a stencil with our Cricut cutting machine. We're gonna apply it to the wood. We're actually going to apply the ammonium chloride solution over top of the stencil. And that's partially correct. Now, whenever I first started trying this out, I'll tell you that ammonium chloride solution seeped into the wood and spread out underneath of the stencil and made just one hot, crazy mess. From there, I tried a whole, whole, whole bunch of other methods, including using like a sealant, like a Rust-Oleum high heat clear coat sealant, as well as an enamel clear spray. I mean, you name it, y'all, I have tried it. No joke. Now I gotta give credit to my husband who first thought about actually mixing the ammonium chloride solution with some unflavored jello just to help thicken it up a little bit so that whenever it laid on top of the wood, on top of the stencil, it didn't actually seep out underneath of the stencil itself. That worked. It actually got me much closer to my final goal. However, it wasn't quite right. That's actually when I came across a very similar video from Kim and Garrett Make It from their YouTube channel. I will link their video for you down in that description box below as well. And what they actually mixed in with their ammonium chloride solution was a food thickener. I can't remember the actual name of it, but I got on Amazon to see if I could find something similar. And I found this right here, which is called Thicket. I actually started testing this out mixed in with the ammonium chloride solution. And y'all, it came out perfect. I'm obsessed. And I honestly cannot wait to show you all how to go about making this entire process. But one last thing that we're going to need is an SVG file to actually burn into our wood, right? So let's jump over right now into designbundles.net and I'll show you the exact image that we're using. All right, so here we are on the designbundles.net website. And yet again, we are using an SVG from this Halloween SVG bundle. I feel like I have used this same bundle so many times over the Halloween season because I love these images so flippin' much. And it's just so affordably priced, which I love even more for all of you guys. Now, currently, as you can see right here, it is marked down to $5 for all 40 designs. However, I did check the price before I started filming today and it is still currently marked down to 50% off. I have no idea what that price is gonna be by the time you go and take a look and potentially buy it for yourself. Fingers crossed it will still be $2.50 or cheaper. These images are just so freaking cute, you all. Like I can't even stand it. It's so, 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 so good. And this image right here, this eat, drink, and be scary, I'm actually using this to put onto our tray for today. So let me jump over to Cricut Design Space and we'll go from there. 
All right, so here we are on the Cricut Design Space Canvas, and you may already notice that I already have our image uploaded onto the canvas. Now, if you're not familiar with how to actually download SVG files from designbundles.net and how to actually get those uploaded into Cricut Design Space, no worries, I got you covered. I actually created a video focused specifically on that, and I will link that for you right up here, as well as down in that description box below. But as for this image today, let's first take a look right over here on the right hand side of this canvas. Cause in this layers panel, y'all there, there's a lot of layers going on right here. <laughs> what we can do is actually fix that ourselves. So since we are going to keep this all one color, because we want this to be all cut out onto one single mat, onto one sheet of vinyl and be used as a stencil, no layers are needed period. So what I'm actually going to do is come up here towards the top of the layers panel. I'm going to select right here where it says group. And as we can see, that selected everything inside of this column. And I am now going to come down here towards the bottom right hand corner and select weld. And weld basically does exactly that. It welds or it fuses or glues or however you want to describe that. It merges them all into one single layer, which really, in all honesty, makes it absolutely perfect for stencils. All right, so now what we need to do is actually resize this to fit onto our 15 inch round wooden disc. So to do that, of course, you all know me <laughs> that I'm actually gonna use a template to do that. So I'm gonna come over here to the left hand side of the page and click on shapes and I'm gonna open up a circle. Now this circle is gonna be our template. The circle is going to represent our wooden disc. Now the color of this template does not amount to a hill of beans. It could be literally any color and it not have any bearing on our final project. However, what I like to do is to come up here towards the top left-hand corner, click on this little color swatch. And since our wooden disc is brown, I'm gonna change this color to brown. And this is gonna just give us an idea of what our end project is gonna look like. It's really just for visualization more than it is anything else. There's absolutely no reason that you have to do that. All right, so now is the time to actually resize this to be the same size as our wooden disc. So to do that, I'm coming up here towards the top of the canvas, right up here where it says size. I'm gonna clear out the numbers right there next to width. I'm gonna type in 15 for 15 inches. And since that padlock is locked, those proportions are also locked in. So it went ahead and changed the height to be 15 inches as well. All right, so now I'm actually going to right click this and then select send it back. And now we can actually drag our image right on top of this disc. All right, now what we can do is actually just resize this image to fit perfectly on our disc. And the way that we can do that is with this little resize handle right here at the bottom right hand corner. We can just drag that outwards if we want, just like so, maybe just a little bit bigger. All right, so I'm really liking the size of that specifically. I think that's gonna look really, really cool on our tray, right? So what I'm actually gonna do now is go ahead and click on our template and we can go ahead and delete that out because we don't really need that anymore. So I'm gonna click on this little red X right up here at the top left-hand corner, just like that. And now we can come up here towards the top right-hand corner and select make it. All right, so this is the matte preview screen, right? Now, what I'm actually gonna do is click on our image right there. And as you can see, we can actually move this around on our mat. Wherever this is located on our mat preview screen, that's exactly what portion of the mat it's gonna be cut out on on our actual real life cutting mat. Now, since we are using this as a template, what I actually wanna do is get this as close to center as possible. Again, we're gonna be applying this ammonium chloride liquid solution. And I really just wanna minimize any possibility of it actually getting outside of our template, that solution getting outside of our template. So I'm actually just gonna line this up and we can tell what is what by this blue line that's surrounding our image. And that right there is looking pretty spot on. So I'm gonna go ahead and go with that. And then I'm gonna come down here towards the bottom right hand corner and select continue. All right, so for our base material, I always like to set my permanent vinyl to premium vinyl. Now, if you are using a Cricut Explore device, all you have to do is turn your dial on your device over to custom. And then this page right here should pop up for you. But what I like to do is come over here and select browse all materials. And I like to do a quick search in this little search bar for premium vinyl. And then I'm gonna select premium vinyl right here. And then come down here towards the bottom right hand corner and select done. All right, so we are all done cutting. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip the mat over and peel the mat away from the vinyl instead of the other way around. 
All right, so whenever it comes time to weeding all of this out, first off, I'm using my pin pen weeding tool. This thing is like a godsend. I absolutely love this. Like it's a total game changer for weeding out vinyl. I ask guys say it again, like I love this thing. All right, so as far as weeding all of this out, what we actually wanna do is weed it somewhat in reverse. And basically what that means is I want to leave everything that I would normally remove and I wanna remove everything that I would normally leave. So instead of actually picking away at the main sheet of vinyl and pulling all that away, that's actually staying, that's gonna be part of our stencil. So I'm gonna go ahead and start weeding all this out and hopefully that'll start making a little bit more sense. All right, so we are done weeding out our design. So now I'm actually just gonna apply this to our transfer tape. And in my opinion, there is no better transfer tape ever than this stuff right here. This stuff is basically like the gold standard for me. It's like witchcraft, like it's magical how good this stuff is. Like I love it. So I'm actually just gonna go ahead and pull off some of the transfer tape. And I'm gonna lay it out sticky side facing up. And this is what I just personally like to do. You don't have to do it this way. I just like to do it this way. I feel like it's a little bit easier. So now I'm actually gonna take my design, my vinyl, and apply it face first down onto the transfer tape. All right, so I'm just flipping this over and I'm gonna burnish over the front of this a little bit as well with my squeegee tool. All right, so I'm actually gonna set this aside and go ahead and start staining my wooden disc round. Y'all, <laughs> I spaced, I made a mistake. I should have went ahead and stained my wooden disc before I did all of this, so that way it could have been drying. But yeah, I didn't think of that, not did I. <laughs> All right, so I just finished staining this entire wooden disc and it says to give an hour to dry, so I'll see you in an hour. All right, so our wooden disc is completely dry now, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab our stencil and actually flip it over face down and I'm actually gonna peel the backing paper off of the stencil instead of the other way around. I've been doing this more and more here lately. I just, I'm just finding that it's a lot easier, at least it is for me anyway. All right, so now I'm just gonna apply this exactly where it needs to go onto the wooden disc. Now, if you need a little bit of help making sure that it lays down exactly where you want it to lay down, I highly, highly recommend using parchment paper. If you need a little bit of guidance on exactly how to do that, I will link my video for you right up here, as well as down in that description box below, because even if you're not necessarily layering vinyl, but instead just applying it to your surface, you can absolutely still use parchment paper to make sure it gets exactly where you want it to go. All right, so now I'm just gonna grab my squeegee tool and then just burnish this down really good to the wood. All right, so now you just wanna grab a corner of your transfer tape and start pulling it back at an angle extremely slowly, making sure that you have the transfer tape down as close to your surface as you possibly can get it, because that's gonna help make sure that nothing is pulling up that shouldn't be pulling up. All right, so now that our vinyl stencil is nicely applied down to our wooden surface, I'm just gonna go ahead and set that to the side real quick and just grab a little bowl. All right, so I'm gonna add in one tablespoon of the ammonium chloride. And I'm gonna put about five teaspoons or so of the thicket in here as well. And now I'm just gonna add in half a cup of hot water. And then just mix this in and let it sit for about a minute or two. All right, so I'm just grabbing this wooden round again. And I'm gonna go ahead and then just dip into this thicket slash ammonium chloride mixture. As you can see, or hopefully you can see, this is like extremely thick. <laughs> but I'm just gonna wipe off some of the excess on the side of the bowl. 
and then go in here and then just lightly cover everything that is revealed by the stencil. You do not want to glop this on, I promise. All right, so now we are completely done covering our stencil with our ammonium chloride slash thicket solution. So what we're gonna do now is just let this completely dry. It will probably, in most cases, get like this milky haze over top of it once it does dry, and that's a good thing. But whenever it's dry to the touch, we're gonna go ahead and peel off our stencil. We'll take it outside, and believe me, that's very important I've learned, is to take this outside and heat it up with the heat gun, unless you want every smoke alarm in your house going off. <laughs> All right, so this is now completely dry to the touch. So I'm actually gonna start peeling back this vinyl stencil very slowly, making sure that none of the wood grain is wanting to pop up with it. That shouldn't happen, but just to be on the safe side, go slow and make sure that it doesn't. Once we actually get this all removed, we'll take it outside and apply the heat gun to it. Y'all, I am obsessed with how this turned out. I love how quick it is. I love how easy it is. I love how affordable it is to do. And I also love that it looks like it was really expensive. I mean, you can do this exact same process with whatever type of stencil that you wanna create and then give it away as a wedding gift or a holiday gift or a birthday gift. You could use this as a door hanger. You could do whatever you want to it that the sky is honestly the limit. And it's just so freaking cool. And it really can make any kind of custom type of gift that you wanna give. Now, if you all like today's episode as well, or if you learned something new, please be sure that you stamp that like button as well as drop a comment down in the comment section below. Both of those things help me out tremendously here on YouTube. And I honestly, I just, I can't thank you all enough. I say it all the time, but I'm just so freaking grateful for you guys. Now, while you're at it, if you're also new around here and you're just wanting to learn more about your Cricut cutting machine or even maybe even want to master it, be sure that you stamp that subscribe button and then are ringing that bell for all of the notifications because you do not want to miss out on a single Cricut minute, especially with the holidays right around the corner. Thank you all again for watching today's episode. As always, I'm just so freaking grateful for each and every single single one of you all. I never want that to become cliche. I truly, truly mean it. Like you, you, the person watching this right now, I'm so grateful for you. You're amazing. Again, thank you for watching today's episode and until next time, stay crafty.